and welcome back to my quick hardware review of the brand new M12088C managed switch from QNAP. I've talked about a number of their solutions in the past, hence why I'm going to keep this one nice and brief. We do have a software overview where we can go into a lot more detail, but the reason I'm going to kind of keep things a little bit brief on this is QNAP does have a wide variety of switches right now, both managed, unmanaged. They're running 1 GBE, 2.5 GBE, and 10 GBE solutions as well. And this 12 for 10 GBE switch arriving at about 600 to 650 nicker for me is kind of the entry business uh, device. Before that, we've seen some of the affordable ones in those white boxes, and I think they're more designed at home and maybe prosumers that are taking the tippy toes into 10 GBE, but this is where things get serious. So this will cover a lot of the points that I've already talked about in a number of my network switch videos about QNAP solutions. And in today's hardware review, we're gonna say what we like, what we don't like, and hopefully help you decide whether this is the switch for you. So. Arriving at that price point, what do you get for your money? Well, we've got we've already done the unboxing video a little while ago. Inside, uh, you've got everything from the rubberized feet that go on there. We've got our mains power cable to connect it. We have got brackets for wall mounting this switch, and again, ceiling, wall, floor, whatever. Um, and we've got information on uh, quick start installation there to set the device up for the first time. My light isn't going nuts there. And we've got information on the warranty which again is two years. And for me, as much as I like this switch, and I genuinely do like almost all of the QNAP switches, I'm not overly keen on that 2.5 GBE switch, I'm not sure about that one, but I like pretty much all of them. The idea that they still haven't embraced lifetime warranties on their products is that first strike for me. Everything else I pretty much like, even the price tag I can swallow, but um, with Netgear Solutions, they don't have as good as software i think as the qnap stuff there with qnet switch um but their lifetime warranty i know a number of users that's one of the main reasons they buy netgear switches over anyone else the reason being that they have a tech guy on site so they don't need user friendly nature they don't need customizable profiles they have someone on in site who will do all that for them and what they want is lifetime support so two-year warranty which can be extended is a good thing I just wish it started with at least three, maybe even five years of warranty because the switches are rugged devices and this is no exception. This 12 port switch, and again, we will get to the fact that this 12 port switch has 20 ports there. Um, regardless, it is rugged. It's very well designed. It has internal cooling as well as metal heat dissipation all the way around. If we have a look at the front there, I just wish it had that warranty. Now, if we move away from that warranty, we can talk about pretty much everything I love about this switch. First and foremost, that great combination of both fiber and copper-based 10 GBE. Every one of those ports is 10 gigabit ethernet, but as you can see with the numbers that I've got, one, two, three, four is all the same, but five, six, seven, eight is duplicated, and nine, 10, 11, 12 is duplicated there. And that's because these are combo ports. It allows you to have a mixed network environment of both copper and fiber and still have them on a single connection or with multiple virtual LANs if you so choose to do it. Now, I like the idea of that. You have local office environments that will have people working at desks and desktop situations. They're gonna be using generally CAT tables, CAT5 and CAT6. And if you have a single floor office, then Fiber is not really going to be that useful to you, but if you're an office environment that's got multiple floors in a building, or you've got multiple sites that are spread out over a, you know, a geolocational short distance, but a physical large difference distance, a fiber network that connects them going into a copper environment internally is hugely desirable. And particularly in those regions of the world now that are getting incredible internet speeds, again, fiber and copper mixed. Uh, managed switches are incredibly desirable and the idea that you can pick and choose and create a configuration that suits you as well as those virtual ones is definitely worth considering for your business now i've kept i've said the word managed like 10 times there those that have watched my other videos will know that i've talked at length about the difference between managed and unmanaged as obvious as that sounds it's worth touching on again an unmanaged switch is one that has all the network connections and it has a bunch of system defaults, but you can't take advantage of things like link aggregation, where you can trunk ports together and get massively combined connections of 10, turning into 20, turning into 40, turning into 40 gigabit bandwidth connections with supported devices. 
But on top of that, you've also got quality of service connections, which allow uh, port priorities as well. You have um, that virtual net, uh, network environment where you can create sub networks and then decide how and what they can talk to and who lives within them, within those IPs. You, it's a layer two switch, so you have lots of package management and package security from things like DDoS or port um, um, con looped connections as well will be identified. And again, the larger the switches you have, the more inclined you are going to be to have those kind of things. It's 250, uh, sorry, 240 gigabits per second carry capacity, which is good as well. You're probably almost certainly never going to hit that. It uses a Marvel processor inside. So again, wholly managed, and it can be accessed both locally over the network and remotely over the internet, which is very, very interesting indeed. Um, and again, that usability of QNET switch is one of the main desirable factors of this. There, there are loads of 10G switches out there and loads of switches that say they are managed, and they are, but they're not usable, and they use fantastically rudimentary controls that look like 2001 uh, Windows XP style stuff. This is bringing it into the modern, and it has a graphical user interface and help that will hold your hand the whole way. I like this switch. I just a real bummer about that warranty for me. And the idea of that price tag seems a little high in conjunction with that warranty. I think this is more likely a 450, 550 switch, and going to 600 to 650 with tax seems a bit steep for me. Um, there are LEDs there on the front there for each of the network connections, and again. They will denote uh, activity, strength of connection, um, you know, just basically bandwidth management from a glance, but you're not going to get as much as you will from the management side of things. And again, you can access it with mobile apps as well. We have fans there on the one side, active cooling. Although the device has active cooling, it's a great deal quieter than that of the Netgear 10 uh, gig switch we were using at the start of the year. So definitely credit to it for that. We've got lots more cooling on that side. And we will be doing a full breakdown of this device uh, on NC. We've taken it apart and have a good look at the transistors and stuff inside. And on the rear, we've got a comms port and a network management port there that allow us to configure this and interact it, uh, not interact it, um, absorb it, uh, at least the management and control into existing network systems if you want to bolt this onto further your existing network environment. But bear in mind, this is not a modem. This is not a replacement for your router. So you're going to make sure, you've got to make sure you've got a router in your network environment or at the very least a wireless modem to take care of the internet traffic coming into your premises and this takes care of things internally. Now that metal chassis is going to be great for assisting heat dissipation in conjunction with those fans, which is a nice thing to see. And it is incredibly compact. We've had uh, 12 port 10G switches here before from other brands, including Netgear, and they are at least twice the size of this. Not so much in depth, but certainly in width. And it's nice to see they've created this nice, compact, cool, and user-friendly device. I genuinely like it. Just got a bit of a bugbear about that warranty, and that's the last time I bring it up. But do stay tuned for the software review coming soon. Do I recommend it? I do. I do recommend this largely because if you do have a QNAP NAS in your environment, there's a lot of crossover in the software as well. So if you're looking for a switch for a QNAP storage and network environment, and you're using it, you know, for like cameras and stuff, you might find this very, very useful. It's not a PoE switch. For that, I would say look at some of the Guardian switches or maybe you know, the entire QGD series of devices from there that are combined NAS and switches in a single chassis. But as switches go, this is probably my favourite one of their range. This is a reimagining of that first generation of switches that were unmanaged, but a managed version, oh, we can definitely get behind this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you have and click subscribe to learn more. There are links in the description to my hardware review at NC. And, of course, you can visit the guys at Span.com, the network storage and data storage experts with nearly 30 years of knowledge in the biz, free pre- and post-sales tech support. They can help you get the right solution for you worldwide. Why not take advantage of that? Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.